right, so this is a quick refresher on fits when we're dealing with mechanical parts and how they fit together. So first thing is these are our standard fits that we have to choose from, either running or sliding fits, clearance locational fits, transition locational fits, interference locational fits, or force and shrink fits. And what you'll notice is happening as you move from the top of this list to the bottom is the fits are getting tighter as you go down. So if you want a loose fit, running or sliding fit, if you want a really tight fit, you're using a force or a shrink fit. So how this pertains to us is in our textbooks and in the machinist handbook, we have fit tables. So this happens to be a running or sliding fit table as noted by the RC5 and also by noted by the caption down here, ANSI standard running and sliding fits. So to try to help this make more sense, so if we had uh, this cylinder and this piston and we wanted to design the fit between these two, I'm working with the diameter of this piston. So this is just a quarter inch diameter piston and then a quarter inch diameter hole. And so I'm gonna choose a fit for this. So I'm gonna choose a running fit and then we have to have some kind of justification as to why a running fit works or why a transition locational fit works or a force fit works. Um, and then inside of those fits, there's different classifications. So I'm gonna choose a RC8 for this. And so we'll see that our running fits go from an RC1 all the way up to an RC9. So just with my knowledge of fits, I can go out to the internet, I can find some different uh, descriptions of fits and why one might be appropriate with the other one. And so that's what I would want students to do is justify why they chose a certain fit. So for this particular one, this piston to the cylinder, I'm gonna use an RC8. So from this chart, I have an RC8, I have a diameter of 0.25. So I follow this row across, so I get over here in the clearance column. And so the numbers I have for clearance is three and 6.6. .6. And then under standard tolerance limits for the hole, I get plus 2.2 .2 minus zero, and I get minus three and minus 4.4. .4. So those are all the numbers I need to be able to calculate and check the fit for this piston to this cylinder. So these numbers are all in thousands. So the first step is to take all these numbers and divide them by a thousand to get them into numbers that we can then add and subtract to our diameter. So that's what I've got here. So using those fit tables, we're just working with the piston, the fit of the piston to the cylinder. So this is gonna be the diameter of the hole in the cylinder. It's a nominal size of 0 0.250. Nominal diameter of the shaft is 0 0.250. And then this is the information we got from the fit tables. So what we do with that is just focusing on the hole in the cylinder first. We're taking this nominal size of 0 0.250 and adding to it the 0 0.0022. And again, I took 2.2 .2 divided by 1,000 to get to this number. I add those two together, so I get one of the limits of my hole of 0 0.2522. And then I take 2 point, or 0 0.250 minus 0. And so these are my upper and lower limits for the acceptable size of the hole in the cylinder when it's machined. So I do the same thing for the piston itself. So for it, I had a tolerance of minus three and minus 4.4. .4. So I take 0 0.250 minus three thousandths to get to 0.247. And I take 0 0.250 minus 4.4 thousandths and I get to 0.2456. So this is my upper and lower limits for the diameter of the piston. And then what I want to do from there is go ahead and check and verify that I did my math right. So I'm finding the, for the hole itself. So I'll go back up to this drawing. So back up to this drawing. So for this hole, what I'm looking for is based off the sizes that I found, which size that when this part is manufactured to that size, that this part weighs the most and that would give me the maximum material condition. So I'm looking for a smaller hole 
would then give this part the most weight, which would be maximum material condition. So for the whole, maximum material condition exists at the smaller diameter. Least material condition exists at the larger diameter. And then for the shaft, it's going to be just the opposite. So my larger diameter is going to make my shaft weigh more. The smaller diameter, my shaft's going to weigh less. So then what I do is I take to find my tightest clearance, uh, which we call allowance. I'm going to take maximum material condition of the hole, 0 0.250, and subtract it from maximum material condition of the shaft. So 0 0.25 minus 0 0.247 gives me an allowance of 3 thousandths. And then to find my loosest clearance, I'm going to take least material condition of my hole, 0.2522, minus least material condition of my shaft, which is 0.2456, and find 6.6 thousandths clearance. And then those two numbers will correspond with the numbers we found from our fit tables. And from the fit table, we found 3.0 and 6.6. And so that matches up with that. And just to prove that, back here to RC8, we've got a 3 and a 6.6. .6. So hopefully that's a, enough of a refresher uh, for those of you who've uh, been through FITS before of how to get to where you can use those numbers and then how you can check those numbers. So as far as what we put on our drawings, so for the drawing for the hole in the cylinder, we're going to machine that hole to Anywhere in between 0 0.250 and 0 0.2522 would be an acceptable range for that hole. And then for the piston itself, for that shaft, we're going to machine it between 0.247 and 0.2456. And that's going to give us this RC8 running or sliding fit. So I hope that helps and uh, good luck on calculating and using fits.